for a holly bear. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here. Amen. So it's always such a good feeling to be in the house of God, to be yes. in this church. Amen. Yes. I'm giving honor to my overseer, to Pastor Jamie. Bless you. Amen. And to all the ministers, prophets, evangelists, everybody in their rightful place. Amen. I am a teacher. Amen. 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 She, she gave me a bell when, it, when she came back from Malaysia and I was sick and I kept bringing it for the kids to bring me stuff and then they, I never saw it again. <laughs> Amen. But I will be, I'm coming from John 1930. Amen. Amen. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, mm. it is finished. Mm. As a matter of fact, he said, it is finished. Yes. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Thank you I thank you, oh God, for what you have done for us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that you chose to use me, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, let me decrease, oh God, so that you, let in, you increase, God. Hallelujah. Fill me with your spirit, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Just moments before Jesus died, but not immediately before he died, Jesus spoke the sixth cross word. It is finished. He began his ministry with three words. It is written. And ended it with three words. It is finished. To know the true meaning of those two powerful phrases, pregnant with so much meaning, we have to journey back through history to the beginning of creation and the fall of man to sin. It is finished. In these three words, I see the consummation of all the Old Testament truth. It is written, and the germination of all New Testament truth. Jesus, the Son of the only true and living God, who had no sin, became flesh so he could live amongst a sinful, undeserving people who he loved without question or reason. And on that day, on a hill called Calvary, took on the sins of the world. <coughs> he wanted a way for us to live eternally in heaven with him. But in order for him to do that, he knew that he was the only way to cleanse us from our filthiness and from the curse of the law from which we needed to be redeemed. You see, there cannot be any sin in heaven. God cannot be in the presence of sin because of his holiness. We were walking dead, eternally separated from God. Sin came into the world from one man, Adam, so it had to be canceled out by one man, the only man who had no sin, Jesus. Galatians 3.13 states that Christ redeemed us from the curse. To redeem means to buy back. We are an expensive lot, yes, people. We were bought with a price yes. that he paid on that wretched, ragged cross as a ransom for us. Yes. Our entrance into heaven has nothing to do with how good we are. What matters is how good Jesus is Amen. and what he did for us. Amen. He lived an absolutely perfect life yes. and paid the penalty for our sin by dying in our place. Those who believe this and accept his payment on their behalf are given a ticket to heaven which can never be revoked. Everything that he did throughout his ministry was for the scriptures to be fulfilled under the law and not for them to be canceled as many thought. His very birth and death was prophesied long before he came, the promised Messiah, born to die. He became our, our high priest, the only one who was allowed in the inner courts of the tabernacle where the spirit and the very presence of God dwelled, yes. separated by a veil from the people. 
Their atonement was made for people with animal blood. God has always dealt with sin through the blood of sacrifices. He was the Lamb of God who was sacrificed for us. Yes. John 1, 21, 29 called him the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Right. Just as innocent animals had died in place of the guilty, so Christ gave his perfect life for sinful mankind. He assumed full responsibility for all our sins and took the punishment that we deserved. Yeah. As he hung on the cross, the judgment and wrath of God was poured out on him instead of on us. It is finished. The sacrifice of animals is no longer necessary. It only covered sin anyway. Jesus' blood cleanses us from sin. And he only had to shed it one time. His blood reconciled us back to the Father, which was his ultimate mission. In John 17, he said, The work that thou gavest me to do, the mission that thou didst send me to accomplish, is finished. It is finished. It is a shout of victory. It is a cry of obedience. God said to the obedience. It is a word that you and I appropriate by a living faith that God gives us a gift. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of love is eternal life. Yes. Jesus is that gift of love. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but my, by me. There's no way around that. Amen? Amen. The veil was ripped. We are no longer separated from the Father. My God. Just like the door to the tabernacle was in the shape of the cross, he became the gateway to the Father. The sin that kept us from perfect, intimate yes. relationship with God, if you receive and accept the gift, yes. no longer hinders. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Are you that whosoever? Yes. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen. Uh -huh. It is finished. It's finished. The prophecies of his sufferings were fulfilled. Yes. Isaiah 53 states that he was oh, no. wounded for our transgressions. Yes. The chastisement of our peace was on him, yes. and by his stripes we were healed. Amen? Amen. Amen. The word given him by the Father had been perfectly done. Yes. A sure foundation had been laid on which a righteous God could pardon the violent transgressor of the law who threw down the weapons of his warfare against him. Luke 9, 23 advises us to take up our cross daily. Yes. Whatever your cross is, yes. pick it up and declare with Jesus, it is finished. Well, I know what the doctor said, but it is finished. Oh. 